Hey, hey everybody, let me see if it will let me tag. Come on in, family and friends. Come on in. Thank you for taking time out of your busy Saturday to join me for Ruth Moments. I am Lakeisha Lewis, one of the founders of the Ruth Group. And the Ruth Group is an acronym that stands for Remain Unshakable Through Hardships. Um, we are a group of women um, that uh, we just want to encourage other women to pursue their God-given passions and to give birth to their divine destinies. Um, so take time out of your busy Saturday and join us for a fresh word. Let us sit at the feet of Jesus, Jesus and let us be encouraged. Um, so come on in, family and friends. I'm taking a quick moment, and I am trying to share this to a couple of groups. Let me tag. Hey, Sophia. Hey, Mom. Hey, Kenya. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> All right, let's see who else is on here. All right, I, I'm, I'm seeing some people on here. So let's see uh, who will join me today for this fresh word. Come on in, family and friends. All right. All right, so please tag, like, and share um, this week's Ruth Moments. Hey, Leticia, thank you for hopping on. Please share it to your page, tag people. Um, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy Saturday. I picked the three o'clock hour. Holy Spirit led me um, in 2020 to go live for 30 days. And um, as I, I, hey, niece, what's happening, Javiana? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're so sweet. Um, but he challenged me to go live for 30 days and when I first began that, going live for 30 days, if you have not seen any of those videos, you can go on YouTube and check those out. It's under Ruth Moments. Um, my name is Lakeisha Lewis. And um, I went live for 30 days at the 3 o'clock hour because um, what I had learned over the years is that the 3 o'clock hour is the time that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, Jesus gave up his life. Um, after he endured the cross, the beating, the scourging, he gave up his life at the three o'clock hour so it's the hour of our grace it's the hour that he surrendered his life in order for us to be brought into new life so um it is three o'clock central standard time even though i'm eastern standard time i still uh kept the three o'clock hour so thank you for taking time out of the day to stop what you're doing to sit at the feet of jesus and to allow me to love on you to pour into you to support you hey sophia hey vanessa hey let's see who else i got uh virginia hey cousin <laughs> thank you thank you thank you beautiful women of god for joining me and as we get this fresh word um before i get into the message as i'm waiting for people to come on i wanted to take a quick moment and i told i met a young lady uh this past week at cumberland mall and um she's uh actually has a clothing line it's oops hashtag jesus and i told her that um i really liked what she had um me and her had a conversation um, and I just wanted to support her. She's a young woman, a young entrepreneur. And I told her that when I do my live, I'll make sure that I give her a shout out. Um, you can check her out. Um, her brand is uh, hashtag Jesus and Jesus the brand. Jesus the brand. And she said, I want people to remember for Christians. She said, I wanted to create a, clo a clothing line so that when you wear it, you know that you're being held accountable. You're being held to a higher standard so that you're not going to act up when you represent in Jesus. So she wanted to do that. But then she also wanted it to be a way to minister to people. So I wanted to give her a shout out. It's Jesus the brand. So you can go 
go to her website, www.jesusthebrand.com and check out her merchandise that she has there. So I, I, I was going to wear it for my Ruth moments. That's what I was planning to do. But then I was like, I want to wear this to church tomorrow. So I decided. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Cindy. Hey, hey, Arenda. Thanks for hopping on. So as um, people are still coming on, before I get deep into our message, I wanted to um, let you know we will be receiving communion. It's something that I feel like God is leading me to do um, at the end of Ruth Moments. It's a way to honor um, God and Christ um, for his sacrifice um, and just receive what he's made available. Um, there is something supernatural that takes place. Divine healing, health and wholeness breaks out. Um, you get set free and this is the year of a new level for you where you're going to receive more healing, more deliverance, more freedom. And so I feel like that really is in line with what he's doing this year. Um, so we will be receiving communion so you can get your elements um, together as we are studying the word today. And then also um, uh, you can use whatever you have. Um, I do order these because I take, I receive communion um, on, a, on a daily basis. It's important for me to be reminded that I'm standing on righteous ground, on blessed ground, that his body was broken so that I don't have to accept brokenness in my life. I don't have to accept any signs of death or decay in my life. And I also know that his blood covers me. It cleanses me, has declared me righteous and holy, and it constantly is speaking for me it speaks a much better thing it declares that i'm blessed and i'm prosperous and i'm protected not just me but all those who are divinely connected to me so when i go into prayer i'm praying for everyone who is connected to me to come up underneath the blessing of of holy communion so um get chips bread toast um whatever it is that you have crackers any type of juice it is symbolic of our faith it's a representation of what we believe and what we are receiving from Christ. God only wants us to receive. That's something that I just um, recently read Romans 12 verse, verses, uh, starting at verse 1. And it talks about the best thing that we can do for God is to embrace what he's given us. And our first gift the first gift that he wants us to embrace is Christ Jesus and all that Christ has made available to us. All of the blessings. Hey, Linda, thank you for hopping on. So we will be receiving communion. And then I'm going to take a quick moment to let you know why the Ruth group exists. Remain unshakable through hardship. If you have lived life for any certain amount of time, you, have, you know that life is designed to break you. It's designed to, um, the enemy comes against you. And so um, as we are living, we have to be intentional uh, that we are going to remain unshakable through hardships. We want to see you pursue your God-given passions. And we want to see you give birth to your divine destiny because it's never too late to walk it out. The enemy will lie to you. He will tell you you've done too much. You've gone too far that you can't pursue the path and plan that God has for you. But we are speaking against that in the mighty name of Jesus. And we want you to remain unshakable through the hardships that you've been through and what you have faced because we are all learning, growing, and winning together. And we are committed and consistent and transparent in this group. And we want to see you win in life. We have made a decision to do life with you. And we want to inspire you ignite you and invite you to walk out your purpose to walk out life with god it tells us in hebrews 3 13 that we are to encourage ourselves daily just like the world if we watch the news if we we hang around a bunch of people who are negative that negativity um it, it's um like garbage and so you have to influence yourself cleansing your mind and your heart of the the negativity um by the washing of the word so you're supposed to encourage yourself daily with the word of god cleansing yourself we bathe ourselves daily sometimes we i know if if it's been a rough day um like i've done yard work or whatever i might take a couple of showers i might take one when i first get up and then one before you know so we are supposed to be uh, supposed to cleanse ourselves with the washing of the word word and we want to influence you um this comes out the ruth group comes from the book of ruth and we want to influence you like naomi did to the point where you embody the scripture where ruth said don't force me to leave you 
Don't force me to go back to my own people. Let me go with you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you sleep, I will sleep. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And that is where I will be buried. I ask the Lord to punish me if I don't keep this promise. Only death will separate us. We want you so sold out to Christ. We want you so sold out to the plan and purpose that he has for you that you will be a Ruth. You will recklessly abandon the way that you used to live. Anything that the Holy Spirit is telling you to get rid of, you will release it and let it go so that you can move forward into the new thing that he is doing in your life. And as we know, Ruth was fully restored. What was barren in her life, where death had came in, God revived it. He gave her a husband. He actually um, allowed her womb to wake up. And so we want you to be awakened. When we studied Deborah uh, back a few months ago, uh, back in 2021, it says, awake, arise, women of God. And I'm calling you to that charge. He said, I had a dream um, a couple weeks ago, and he said, I'm calling out the forerunners. So we want to see you sold out in full surrender to Christ, that no matter what you've been through, keep moving forward like Ruth did. So much so that you become not only a Ruth, but a Naomi to the next woman. You will be the one who inspires ignites and invites the next person the next woman to come along on this journey with us all right so we so god has given us he's speaking through the titles of each message that we've had thus far this year i have been completely amazed and blown away by it we are ruthing it that's what we got started it uh started this year we're ruthing it you better ruth it remain unshakable through it that's what that means that the enemy's not going to roll out a red carpet as you level up. There are going to be things that are going to try to stop you from making progress. There are squatters on the land that, that you rightfully have inherited through Christ. And so you have to root it. You have to get this resolve about yourself. That no matter what the enemy is doing to you, you are going to root it. You are going to keep moving forward because you are been, you've been called out to be a forerunner for those who are connected to you. All right? So, um, let's, let's get into the word, okay? Let's get into it. <laughs> I'm game. I'm game was one of the others, um, and then you're ready for the world. And I'm going to go over that here, too, before I finish. And then this message today is lights camera action all right lights camera action so um let's dig in so when you you think of lights camera action we know that that's traditionally used um as a cue to members of a film crew at the beginning of a take okay so for my note takers all of you who got your pens and your pad and your snack and, and you're writing down what you, you you know holy spirit is saying to you in this hour i want you to know that he wants you to, to know that lights camera action means this is a cue to members of a film crew at the beginning of a take so god always speaks to me in words he always has me look up definitions so when i seen the word cue it stood out so i went to it and it says when this statement is spoken it is an indication or a cue to action. A cue to action is stimulus needed to trigger the decision-making process to accept a recommendation. All right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to rewind for my note takers. A cue to action is stimulus. Now, we all familiar because of COVID. We're all familiar with what a stimulus does. When they, they handed out the money, they were stimulating the economy. It's energy. It's, it's, it's something that's influencing. It's moving. So a cue to action is stimulus needed to trigger the decision-making process to accept a recommendation. This is a part of Holy Spirit's responsibilities. He offers us a recommendation, and what he recommends is the best course of action. Holy Spirit's job, one of his responsibilities, is to offer us a recommendation.
that's going to trigger in us, stimulate in us to make a decision. To make a decision. So what he recommends is always the best course of action. This is why it's so important that you get into a place where you're constantly being spirit led. In the New International Version, in Deuteronomy 30, 19, it says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. This is a part of what Holy Spirit does. He helps you to walk out the life that Christ Jesus died for you to have. He helps you to walk in that place of blessing. And he helps you to stay. He eliminates you from actually being impacted by the curse of the law. And God tells us, now choose life. Choose my way of living. Choose my way of being. Be spirit led so that you and your children may live. That's being a forerunner. You are changing the, traje the trajectory of the people that are divinely connected to you. Jesus teaches his disciples this about being spirit led. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. So many of us are looking, we, we play these games on Facebook that is forecasting our futures and we, we, we get into psychics and we get into horoscopes and we get into all this because we have a natural craving on the inside of us to know of things that are to come. It's not wrong to want to know what is going to come and what is going to happen. What is wrong is when you choose the wrong source. Where are you getting your information? Holy Spirit will reveal to you things, secret things, mysteries. And so we have to make sure that our source is correct. The enemy is not a creator of anything. He's a perverter and a twister of things. He takes the truth. He injects a lie and now it's all perverted and twisted and God has shown me just recently a ball of yarn and then when you look at a ball of yarn all of the yarn is entangled and wrapped together and that's what God said I'm I'm doing for my daughters this year there's new levels of freedom of healing and deliverance things that they have thought to be truth and that are actually rooted and based in a lie he said I'm un I'm releasing them from that. I'm untangling the web of lies that they have believed. So let's get to it. The first one is lights. I'm going to read uh, some scriptures to you that let you know that you are the light of the world. That he has placed inside of you these earthen vessels, his light. And I'm going to share with you because he's calling the lights. He's calling you to the front. He's setting you on a hill. He's setting you so that you can shine. All right, so I'm getting ahead of myself. So when Jesus saw his ministry, I need you guys paying close attention to this. This is coming out of Matthew 5. I'm reading it from the message translation. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing crowds, he climbed, on, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Those that are apprenticed to him, the committed climbed with him. That was a word for somebody about being committed to the process, to protect the process that God has you in and to climb. That is going to require intentionality and effort. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. Holy Spirit is teaching you. This is what Jesus said to to the disciples he's teaching the crowd the multitudes you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope how many people are at the end of their rope with less of you there is more of God in his rule he allows you to get to that place where you're at the end of your rope so that you are now less of you and you are desiring more of him in the way that he wants you to live your life it's a place of surrender. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. 
you're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you embrace. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. His food, um, he's food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. He's food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being care, careful, full, F-U-L-L, careful, you'll find yourselves cared for. When, you have, when you're at that place where you, you have carried all of the cares, you're full of cares, worries, and concerns, the best place you'll find yourself is to realize that you are being cared for. That he cares about what you care about. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mental, let, let me just read it. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. Everything internal impacts what we see externally. So when we get our mind and our heart right, then we can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete and fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The, pers the persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. It's fuel to move you forward with God's plan. Not only, sorry, not only that, Count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit you. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You house Holy Spirit and your spirit, Holy Spirit in you makes those people uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer even. Celebrate. For though they don't like it, I do. <laughs> Jesus said, I do. I like it. And all of heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. You are not alone. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Let me tell you why you are here. Why you are here. Why God still has a plan for you. Why he's still speaking to you. Why he's still leading you and guiding you. Why he hasn't given up on you. Why his love is actively pursuing you. You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. So you are here. This is what I want to put emphasis on. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. Here's another way to put it. Lights. Here we go. Lights. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light. Bringing out the God colors in the world. You're shining for his glory and honor. He's, he's glowing you up. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this. As public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? Do, you don't think I'm going to... Jesus saying, I put this light in you. He says... I'm not going to hide you under a bucket. You don't think that, do you? He says, no, you're ready for the world. <laughs> you're ready. He's yelling lights. He's setting you on a hill. He's leveling you up. He's moving you forward with his plan and purpose for your life. 
everybody, no matter what level you are on, no matter where you are with your walk with God, he's moving you forward in his plan. I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Don't dim your light for other people. In Romans 12, it talked about don't allow the world to bring you down into a place of immaturity. Don't allow what the world, don't conform to this world in the ways, don't let people bring you down to a place of immaturity because God is leveling you up. He's bringing you into a place of maturity. Keep open, keep open house. Be generous with your lives. Be opening up to others. You'll prompt people to open up with God. This generous father in heaven. That's Matthew 5, verses 1 through 14 in the message translation. In last week's message, Ready for the World, in Matthew 10, Jesus said this. He sent his 12 harvest hands out with this charge. Don't begin to travel to some far off place to convert unbelievers. And don't try to be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Listen, you have to get your direction before you move forward with God, with the vision he's giving you. You have to make sure that you are taking your directives, the recommendation that Holy Spirit is leading you to take, the open doors. He's going to be strategic. He's going to give you strategies on how you are to walk into the blessings and how to bring forth the vision into this earth. So you must follow Holy Spirit's promptings. And don't be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick. Raise the dead. Touch the untouchables. Kick out the demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. Don't think you have to put on a fundraising campaign before you start. How many people say, well, I need this before I can start. Or I wish I had that before I can start. Or I don't know. And I... And he's saying, you don't have to go into that. Don't go into this fundraising campaign before you start saying you need a bunch of stuff and you need, you need all these people to rally with you. No, you don't need a lot of equipment. You are the equipment. And all you need to keep that going is three meals a day. So travel light. When you enter a town or village, don't insist on staying in the luxury inn. Get a modest place with some modest people. And be content there until you leave. When you knock on the door, be courteous in your greeting. If they welcome you, if they welcome you, if they welcome you, be gentle in your conversation. If they don't welcome you, quietly withdraw and don't make a scene. Shrug your shoulders and be on your way. This is how you carry the light of God. This is how you shine for his glory and honor. You don't have to get into this place where you are arguing with non-believers, where you, because we're not called to everyone. He gave them specific instructions on who to, to, um, to share the gospel with, to be connected to. Go to the lost, confused people right in your neighborhood. He's giving you strategy. You don't have to get into this place where you're arguing with people who don't believe, who don't believe in the God that you serve, who don't believe in Christ Jesus. You're not called to them. Because what when they it tells us that if they 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 don't welcome you, then quietly withdraw. Holy Spirit will reveal what's in somebody's heart. And we're not called to those whose hearts are so hard and and we're not called to war and fight about our father. He doesn't need us to defend him. That's where we lose a lot of people when the church is fighting amongst each other. When we are fighting with non-believers who are offended at God. There are some people whose hearts are just so hardened that they're like, the, like, like, they're like Pharaoh. And you got to shrug your shoulders and keep moving forward. But you have to be in tune with Holy Spirit so that he can be begin to reveal to you because you don't know what's in a person's heart, but Holy Spirit does. He knows the conditions of the heart. And so he will begin to, he will tell you things that you don't know that you don't have access to when you're in relationship with him. We are called to those that are lost, those who are hurting, but looking and longing for the father's love. 
that's who you're called to. There are people out here who are lost, who are who are longing and looking for something other than themselves. They want something more. And those are the people that God is calling us to. They already have a heart for the Father to receive the Father. They just don't know how to go about it. And those are the people. So we must be spirit led because he will reveal what's hidden in the heart of a person. We need to watch and listen and their true motives will be revealed. That is the light. You are the light. And one of the other things that Holy Spirit is saying to me right now, somebody may have received a negative report. May, somebody may be battling with something that's going on, a situation or a circumstances, finances or health wise. He said, I always reveal what's hidden in darkness so that you can begin to pray and I can intervene and help you. Lights. How can you know where the enemy is attacking you and trying to destroy you? How can you know what's legally, rightfully yours unless the light is illuminated and it shows you the path and plan that God has for you? You have to take that initiative. You are the light. Don't dim your light for other people. And don't take your light into places that God has not called you into. So lights, now we're a camera. Lights, camera, action. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to the definition. Traditionally, this is used to cue the members of a film crew at the beginning of a take. So the next word that God told me to look up is what is a take? It's a sequence of vision. I'm going to pause right there because we've been talking about vision since, since November October, November of 2021. It's a sequence of vision, photographed or recorded. A sequence of vision, photographed or recorded. I'm going to read these scriptures to you to support that he's saying camera time. It's camera time. After the millennial rule in Revelations 20 verses 11 through 15, it says, I saw a great white throne and the one enthroned. Nothing could stand before or against the presence. Nothing in heaven, nothing on earth. And then I saw all the dead, great and small, standing there before the throne. And the books were opened. Then another book was opened, the book of life. The dead were judged by what was written in the books, by the way they had lived. Sea released its dead. Death and hell turned in their dead. Each man and woman was judged by the way he or she had lived. Then death and hell were hurled into lake fire. This is the second death, lake fire. Anyone whose name was not found inscribed in the book of life was hurled into lake fire. You and I who have accepted Christ, who is sealed with his Holy Spirit, who is lit up on the inside, who is alive on the inside, we are found inscribed in the book of life. So we're not being hurled into that lake of fire. We are not being condemned for all eternity, but we have life that is flowing through us. But all of the deeds is what I want to draw the attention to. The camera is there. In the scripture, it says all of the deeds that they had done while they were alive were recorded in this book. It's a camera. It's recording it. So let's go on. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 through 28, it says, now that's, that's not our experience, right? No, that's not your experience at all. Now, in this scripture um, that I've pulled out, they are talking about um, Mount Zion. That God switched mountains from the law of the Ten Commandments, where he initially gave that, Mount Sinai. He switched mountains to Mount Zion. We are under Mount Zion. We are under grace. We are under the gift of his love and, and, and what we receive through Christ Jesus. So your experience is not going to be that of Mount Sinai. You are no longer under the law, but you are now under grace. So now, that's not our experience. So now that we're at Mount Zion, the city where the living God resides, we reside with him. He resides with us. The invisible Jerusalem is populated by throngs of festival, festive angels and Christian citizens. That's you and I. 
It is the city where God is judge with judgments that make us just. He justified us. He deemed us. We are not guilty. We have legal grounds to stand on because of the blood of Christ. It is the city where God is judged with judgments that make us just. You've come to Jesus who presents us with a new covenant, a fresh charter from God. He is the mediator of this, of this covenant. The murder of Jesus, unlike Abel's, a homicide that cried out for vengeance, became a proclamation of grace. That is why the blood speaks a much better thing. It has declared you blessed and prosperous. It de declares that you're protected and provided for. So don't turn a deaf ear to these gracious words. If those who ignored earthly warnings didn't get away with it, what will happen to us if we turn our backs on heavenly warnings? His voice that time shook, shook the earth to its foundations. This time, he's told us, this quite plainly he'll also rock the heavens one last shaking from top to bottom stem to stern the phrase one last shaking means a thorough house cleaning getting rid of all the historical and religious junk so that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered don't do you see what we've got We've got an unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship, deeply reverent before God. For God is not indifferent, an indifferent bystander. He's actively cleaning house, torching all that needs to burn, and he won't quit until it's all cleansed. God himself is fire. Well, why did I read that to you? Because what it tells us is that whatever we do for Christ, whatever we do for the kingdom of God, whatever we do that is spirit led, that will remain. We are doing something that is unshakable for the kingdom and God is watching. He is called lights, camera, and now he's saying action. We are on the winning side. We will give an account of the righteous things that we've done and we will receive rewards. He's not looking to punish us. His judgment is gone for those who are in Christ. Judgment no longer for us. But what he is recording, what he is, he is keeping record of is all of the things that you do for the spirit of God, for the kingdom of God. He said those things will remain. And at the end, I'm going to open up the book and I'm going to see all of the things that you've done to establish my kingdom. And I'm going to reward you accordingly. I am going to reward you accordingly. We don't do, we, we only do three things. We are on the winning side. As Christians, we learn, we grow, and we win, period. So now that you know this, take action. Action. You don't have to get into a place where you're fearful of making mistakes, of stepping out, of walking through that open door. You don't have to be afraid to move by faith and not by sight. You don't have you don't have to be worried about being radical for Christ. Because you everything that you do for him, he is using it as a learning process, as a growing process so that you can walk into that winning season. Christ has set us free. He has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Action take your stand. Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. Whether that's your own negative thoughts, whether that's somebody connected to you, a parent, somebody who's in leadership, never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you that says that you don't meet the standard that you have to carry out all of these religious acts and these laws in order to be accepted. You have been accepted, my dear, in the beloved, in Christ Jesus. Paul says, I am emphatic about this. The moment any one of you submits to circumcision or any other rule-keeping system at the same moment, Christ's hard-won gift of freedom is squandered. Immediately when you get into legalism where you're making a bunch of laws for yourself, you're rigid, 
you're you're constraining Holy Spirit from being able to move in your life. I know that we talk about discipline as Christians, but what we need to be disciplined to is to be disciplined to the move of Holy Spirit, not into keeping a bunch of rules and regulations. And when things get rigid, like rigor mortis, it's evidence of death. There's no movement in it. There's no life in it. So Christ is not in it. Christ is not in it. So what we need to discipline ourselves is, is to be in this place where we know that we're righteous, that we are blessed and prosperous because of what Christ has done. We need to be disciplined in knowing that we don't have to keep a bunch of rules and laws because we are disciplined to move by Holy Spirit's promptings. That's what we need to put our discipline into. Being led and guided by Holy Spirit, the spirit of life. The person who accepts the ways of circumcision, which is just a representation of legalism, of keeping a law, of tradition. The person who accepts the ways of circumcision trades all the advantages. You, you, you're giving up the benefits. It says, forget not all his benefits. You're trading in all the benefits, all of the advantages of having the free life in Christ for the obligations of the slave life of the law. Now you're in bondage. I suspect you would never in, in, never intend this, but this is what happens when we're not being intentional, when we're not being focused on what Holy Spirit is revealing to us. This happens unintentionally. We find ourselves trying to keep a bunch of rules. That's why when you set these New Year's resolutions, most people do not follow through with the resolution because it's not. there's no life in it. It's a bunch of laws that you've set for yourself for the new year. And you didn't do it intentionally. You thought that this is what you should be doing. That's what you should be pursuing. But in actuality, there's no life in it. And so when you attempt to live by your own religious plans, come on Holy Spirit. When you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects, that's why God said, I have given you the vision and I need you to be spirit led because I'm leading you and guiding you into that vision. When you get into that place where you have your own religious plans and projects, you are cut off from Christ. You fall out of his grace and now you've switched mountains. You're no longer at Mount Zion where God resides. You are back at Mount Sinai. Where you're activating the curse in your life. And so you get into this place where you feel guilty and condemned because you're breaking your own heart with all these rules and regulations that you put and these stipulations that you put on yourself. And so now you feel like you have to take what you are suffering from because that is the penalty. You earned it and that you deserve it. That is not the case. Switch mountains. Get back to the place where God resides. Get back to Mount Zion. Get back to being in Christ Jesus, knowing that he is your righteousness. He is your right standing. He has crowned you with glory and honor. He has put you on favor ground. He is leading you into the blessings. When you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects, you are cut off from Christ. You fall out of grace. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, we expectantly wait for a satisfying relationship with the spirit for in Christ, neither are our most conscientious religion nor disregard of religion amounts to anything. What matters, what matters is something far more interior, faith expressed in love. It is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life, Jenny. He has called you to a free life, Jane. He has called you to a free life, Kaishel. He is calling you, Sophia, to a free life. He's calling you to a free life, Aunt Karen. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to deserve it. So you can get out from underneath Mount Sinai and get back to your mother, Grace. Come on, get back to that place of grace. It is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom 
as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. Because if you feel like, okay, I'm free because it says um, I'm free to do anything, but not everything has a benefit. So it's not a freedom to where you are um, pulling, you are living without restraint. It's not you. I'm just going to live any kind of way. No, you are being intentional about being spirit led. That you are going to live how Holy Spirit wants you to live. And he is the one that's responsible. He is the one that cleans you up. You don't have to get into a place where I need to fix myself. I need to transform my mind. I need to transform my life. That's Holy Spirit's job. And you're stepping on his toes. You've just switched mountains as you try to transform and change not only you but other people. So... Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love, faith, and love. That's how freedom grows. That's why most people don't want to be a part of religion. Religion means to bind, to restrict. There's no life in it. Because you've gotten under some, some teachers who are afraid to allow their people to grow and to flourish and to be who God has called them to be. You need to... Get under somebody else who will allow you to flourish, who will trust that Holy Spirit is in you and that Holy Spirit will do the job. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. If you bite and ravage each other, watch out. In no time at all, you will be annihilating each other. And where will your precious freedom be then? You are in bondage. My counsel is this. Leave, live freely, animated, and motivated by God's spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there is a root of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds against our free spirit. That's the war of the flesh. There's a spirit in us and then there's the flesh, the selfish part of us that only wants to gratify itself. It wants to live selfishly and it wars against the spirit, the nude, renewed spirit on the inside of us. Just as the spirit, free spirit is incompatible with selfishness. These two ways of life are contrary to each other so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way according to how you feel on any given day. Why don't you choose to be led by the spirit? This is spirit led action. Choose to be led by the spirit and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law dominated existence. It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time? This is takes this year is a level level of maturing. He said that when when we he gave us a message about being I'm I'm game, I'm willing, and I'm eager to accept the challenge of the new that he's doing in my life. This means that sometimes you're not gonna get your way. And the flesh always is selfish and self-centered and wants its way. You have to develop a life. A, a life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. This is what it produces. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless, grabs for happiness, trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, all consuming yet never satisfied wants, a brutal temper, an impotence to love or to be loved, divided homes and divided lives, small minded and lopsided pursuits, the vicious habit of uh, despair dispersonalizing everyone into a rival jeez you turn everybody into your enemy uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions ugly 
parodies of community. I could go on. This isn't the first time I have warned you. You know, if you, you already know this. So if you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. But what happens when we live God's way, he brings gifts into our lives. So it's a benefit for you to follow Holy Spirit because there are gifts that he wants to bring into your life. Not to condemn you and to say that you are guilty. He is wanting to bring you into new levels of healing and deliverance. He wants to set you free from legalism, from the religious spirit. He wants you to have a free heart so that you can be led and guided into the promises and the vision that he's giving you. But what happens when you live God's way? He brings gifts into you, our lives much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affections for others exuberance about life, serenity. We developed a willingness to stick things out. We we become faithful. And you you don't have to produce this. This is not your job. This is not your job. This is about being um, spirit-led and taking spirit-led action and allowing Holy Spirit to do a new thing in you. He's, he's saying to you, he will develop a willingness to stick things out. So if you, you have... Um, you drop the ball or you're not dependable, then guess what? Holy Spirit will work that out of you and he will bring you to a place where you are willing to stick things out that you won't cave in and you won't quit. A sense of compassion in the heart and a conviction that a, ba uh, that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. These are the things that Holy Spirit will produce in you just by being in relationship with him and following his leadership, following his teaching, allowing him to convict you and not condemn you. Because when you get condemned, you just switch mountains. Grace is there. It says where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. So if you are not meeting the requirements in an area, stick with Holy Spirit because he will help you produce the fruit that you long to produce. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about and it only gets in the way. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting your own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for good. He sets you free. He kills it off for good. You can temporarily discipline yourself to do a thing, but eventually it will rear its ugly head again. But with Holy Spirit, true heart transformation will come about and he will kill that thing off for good. If it's still in your life, that means Holy Spirit's still working in you. And to give yourself some grace. Get yourself over to Mount Zion where God resides, where his love is, where his presence is, where he's speaking to you. And allow him to transform you from the inside out. Let him be the guide. Let him help you take spirit-led action. You don't have to force your way into the, the promotion, into the new level. You just be with him and you will automatically elevate because you're alive. And anything that's living will always produce growth. It will naturally happen. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the spirit, let us make sure that we... Do not just hold it as an idea in our heads. Oh, this sounds good. No, it's more than that. It's not just an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts, but work out its implications in every detail of our lives. It says in Romans 12 to lay out our life daily as an offering to God and allow his spirit to come in and be our lead. Check it out in the message translation. It's so good. That means we will not compare ourselves with each other as if one of us were better than and another is worse. We're not comparing ourselves whether we feel like somebody's better than us. So now I feel bad about who I am and I'm not going to compare myself and, and put myself on a pedestal like I'm better than that person because they're worse off than I am. I'm not going to compare at all. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives than to be focused on other people. Come on. 
we we have more things going on in our lives than to be inter interested in other people. Each of us is an original. This is what religion misses. This is what religion tries to stop. The originality, the unique you, that you have gifts and talents that the body of Christ needs for you to walk in. Somebody who is connected to you needs your story, needs your healing, needs your deliverance so that they can be healed and delivered and set free themselves. Don't think that you have to, on the level that you're on right now, don't think that you can't make an impact in this world. God, God is saying that let your light shine what I've placed in you and what I've done for you thus far. Let that be the light that shines, that permeates, that I can use to set other people free. Don't think that you have to compare yourself. Well, I'm not where she is and I'm not where she is and he is and I don't have it all together. That's a lie from the pit of hell and we come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. You have Holy Spirit. You have the light. You have the camera. Now take action. You are standing in Mount Zion, holy ground. Each of us an original. Live creatively. Live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him or her, saving your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day is out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Come on, Holy Spirit. There are people who are oppressed who you actually, Sophia, you may feel like I have not reached the, the potential that I know that God is leading me into. But there is somebody who is at a lower level than you that you can reach and pull up. Jenny, you have an impact to make. You can reach and pull somebody up because you are not the person that you were two years ago. You are on a new level. You are on a new course of action. You are taking new action. Virginia, come on. You are making a mighty impact for the, for, for the kingdom of God that is unshakable. So you might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. So stoop down and reach out to someone Reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens. And so complete Christ's law. The law of love. Faith and love. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. And that's Galatians 5 verses 1 through 25. And then 6, chapter 6, verse 1 in the message translation. It was so good. I had to read it all. I, I was like, Holy Spirit, there's no way. This is so good. I can't. I got to share this with everybody. Jane, if you're listening to this, if you're catching the replay, Johnette, Kiana, who, if you're listening to this word, this is an on-time word for you that the level that you are on, God is leveling you up. The level up is his responsibility. What he needs you to do while you are on this level is to shine. And to reach down because there's somebody. Remember, I did a message. It was, um, it was the apprentice, the expert, the teacher, and I did the different levels. Well, we're all on different levels, and God is always leveling us up. He's taking us to the next level, and so. Don't think that you have to get to the next level in order to be used by God on the level that you're on. That is the de deception of the enemy. It's a distraction and it's a lie from the pit of hell. He doesn't want you helping anybody. So this is why God has called us into this 31 days, or sorry, 30 days of rest. So that, I, that he could hit the reset button. So he could... Show me my motives. Why are you doing a thing? So that what the stuff that I'm doing doesn't become legal in my life. That it does, it restricts Holy Spirit and the flow. And so this is why we have to be in a place where we are being spirit led constantly. And when Holy Spirit says, don't talk to that person. Don't make that phone call. Don't go to that place. We have to start yielding to the Holy Spirit. Because it's lights, camera, and it's action time. It's action time because there are people who are waiting for us to step into that calling. To accept the call that God has put on our lives. 
We are resting from any works we can do within our own strength during these 30 days. I'm not going to manipulate my transformation. I'm not going to manipulate the vision that God has given me. I'm not going to play up to people. I'm not going to put myself in compromising situations. I'm going to keep moving forward with what God has for me. And I'm going to be spirit led. We are resting and relaxing in his care so that we, we are not making our relationship with Christ one of rules and regulations. The very nature of having a bunch of rules and regulations means that I'm playing up. I'm trying to perform. I'm trying to do a bunch of stuff. But when I'm in relationship with somebody, I can just be me. Unapologetically me because they know me. They know my heart. They know that I love them. Freedom, Jane. It is true freedom. We are seated with Christ. We house Holy Spirit. And as we rest, in this, we can trust that Holy Spirit will lead us in the path that Christ has uniquely etched out for our lives. We are taking our faith to another level and we are developing a deeper relationship with our Heavenly Father. We are seated in Christ. We are in a place of rest in Mount Zion where the Spirit of God lives, where He resides. We house His Holy Spirit and we can rest that Holy Spirit will do the work. So that we can go into a deeper relationship with our Heavenly Father. He told us this year, we Ruth in it. He says, all I need is you to say, I'm game. I'm eager and I'm willing to accept the challenge to go to the new level. You going, you protecting your progress, you getting into that place, that open door that he's telling you to walk through is Tension upon you being brought up to your next level. He wants you to shine where you are. And he wants you to walk by faith and not by sight. So I'm not going to think about this too much. I'm not going to check with my emotions on this. I'm going to check with Holy Spirit on this. And if Holy Spirit has opened up this door and this is a divine opportunity, then guess what? This me walking through this door is connected to my next level of freedom, of healing, and deliverance. You got to say I'm game and I'm ruthing it. No matter what the enemy throws at me, whatever he tries to use, whoever he tries to use, I'm ruthing it this year. I'm ready for the world because my Heavenly Father has said that I'm ready. And now, lights, camera, action. That is your word for today. <laughs> I'm on here a little bit longer. And I got to catch y'all. I have to see these comments because I wasn't able to read them and get through. I didn't want to, you know, we could have been on here two, three hours for sure. Like, let's just have an open discussion about the message, really. That's what we could have done. But, you know, um, I, I'm just, he's saying lights, camera, action. It's time. It's time for you to step out, trust that Holy Spirit got you, and that you can't fall. Lights, camera, action. He's calling us into action. You are a forerunner. You are making a dynamic impact for the kingdom of God, for the people who are connected to you, and you have to be bold about it. That's why I'm ruthing it. I'm going to remain unshakable through it. I may feel the shaking. I may feel the shaking. Have you ever been on... Um, let me think. What's a good example? Uh, have you ever used a, a, a like a um, motorized uh, tool where something that vibrates in your hand, and then after you let it go and you sit it to the side, you still feel that vibration in your hand? Well, it's the same way. Just because you feel the shaking around you, just because your mental and emotional state is unstable and is still shaking doesn't mean that you're not standing on solid ground. That you have not been accepted in the beloved. <laughs> Sophia, you, <laughs> you crack me up. <laughs> Though it shakes, you are on solid ground. Christ ground. Blessed ground. And God is moving you forward. All he wants you to do is to follow. 
follow the open doors and everything else will move into its place. If there are people, your children are acting up, if there are people around you who's not leveling up and they're not doing what they're supposed to do, when you level up, watch, the shift will occur. People will go to the next level with you. All right, so we got our communion elements and we are ready to receive what Christ has made available. We want to just honor him today. We want to thank him for the word that he has given us. We want to thank him for the level up, the new levels of freedom, of healing and deliverance. He said, this is a year of 2.0. I'm redoing a thing in your life and I'm making it better. It's an acceleration. It's better than what you've thought, what you wish for, what you wrote in that vision. It's, it's so much better than that. And he said, it's a 3G of promises. He says, get more promises, greater promises, and guaranteed promises. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word today. We thank you for your daughters. We thank you for all that will hear the replay. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that you will come into our lives in a dynamic way, that we will experience your love in a tangible way, that we will grow in the experience with your miracle signs and wonders and all of the new things that you are doing in our lives. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the new thing. It springs forth. We declare it and decree it in the mighty name of Jesus. We say new levels of healing, new levels of deliverance new levels of freedom we are establishing your unshakable kingdom and we can only do that through your spirit to be led and guided by your spirit we take your body which was broken so that our bodies could be made whole and we declare thank you we say thank you thank you jesus and thank you heavenly father for the gift and we declare that as you are in heaven fully healed fully healthy and fully whole we declare the shalom, the sozo life of Christ into our bodies. Take and eat. Thank you for this cup. We are so grateful. We are so grateful for all that you have done. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise for the cup. You took our cup of sin guilt, shame, and condemnation. In exchange, you've given us this divine cup of your blood, which speaks a much better thing, which declares us blessed and prosperous. You cause everything that we do to prosper and succeed because you are with us. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this cup, this cup of blessing. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood covering. It cleanses us. It has allowed us to move into relationship, to be in Mount Zion and not under Mount Sinai. So we just give you glory. We say thank you. Now take and drink and taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone is leveling up and taking new ground. I declare it and decree it into your life. There is still much more land to be possessed. New levels of healing, new levels of freedom, deliverance. But you have to say, I'm game. I'm ruthing it. That no matter what the enemy comes at me with, I'm going to remain unshakable through it. That I'm ready for the world. That he can use me right where I am on the level that I am on. He can use me because it's lights, camera, and action time. All right? So we are going to be coming up next uh, this coming Friday with our Freedom Friday session. That one, we do want to actually be more involved in a conversation with you um, to begin to prophesy, um, to reveal to you things that God is doing in your life. We want to speak the word over you. We want you to be able to level up and go to that new level of freedom. So be on the lookout for the uh, information on that on my Facebook page and also in the Ruth group. If you have not joined the Ruth group, check us out. It's r.u.t.h group on Facebook. We also have a website, IWillRemainRG.com. And if you want to give to the ministry, if you want to support us so that we can continue to be secret blessing snipers, um, please uh, go and give at Cash App, dollar sign, remain unshakable. Um, you can also um, give on Cash App or PayPal, sorry, um, at remain unshakable. You can also give through our website if you want to do it that way, and that takes you to our PayPal. 
Um, April Grady is our prayer warrior. She did a phenomenal job. She said, if you have not got your vision out, it's not too late. We are only at the 22nd day of the year and you can still get your vision out so God can breathe on it and he can walk you into it. Kenya Coleman is doing Let's Talk Tuesdays with KYC. She talked about uncertainty, what to do in times of uncertainty. So, you know, check her out. Check out her previous messages. She has a YouTube channel as well. And if you are looking to have a spirit-led mentor, if you are one of those people who just don't know how to discern between your own will, wants, and flesh, and you want a spirit-led mentor, we actually do mentorship and we do give you a free consultation. We will go over the path and plan with you. Reach out to us on um, via email or messenger. Um, and um, our website, um, our email is IWillRemainRG at gmail.com. You can do that through our website, IWillRemainRG.com. So that is your message. That is your Ruth moments. I thank you for allowing me to pour into you, to in encourage you, to inspire you, to ignite you, and invite you to continue to walk it out, to remain unshakable through it because it's never too late to walk it out. All right? We love you, ladies, to life. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you next. Oh, actually, I have something going on next week. So I may or may not be able to do Ruth moments next week, but look forward. Um, I look forward to doing that. See ya. Bye.